What's up guys? So we're going to be doing the hand trap tier list for March. What's really interesting this format unfortunately is that you need two hand traps to play the game. So it's like pretty much all of them would be like a D or C tier if it's just like one hand trap by itself. But if you have two hand traps that's when they do all kind of become a lot stronger which is interesting. Another thing as well is that when I'm rating these hand traps the way it's going to work is let's assume you have like nine or 12 slots for hand traps in your deck and so if a hand trap is d it's like there's never a reason to run this over something else even if the card is good there's always a better option if it's s tier you should always kind of dedicate one of your slots to it that's how i'm i'm running this tier list but anyway yeah to start off with contact c contact c i'm definitely going to say it's going to be a a d tier unless you're like yeah, I, I can't even think of a really good number. I don't even think it's worth running like B Troopers. And it's essentially because while it does kind of hit certain decks a little bit, there's so many kind of Hulk decks and stuff running around that just need a material plus a tuner that I don't want to ever give my opponent a material under no circumstances. I don't want to give them a free Baron, for example, because Contact C is at level six. I don't want to do any of that, no. And so that's the main issue of Contact C, even though it could potentially be a good card. Um, the Retaliating C as well also applies, um, would also be here. I don't have it on my list, but yeah, unless you're playing B Troopers, I don't think you should be playing Retaliating C either. Moonlit Chill also D tier, and yeah, it comes down to so again, um, this is just the worst effect failure, and effect failure isn't even that good. It's just the worst effect failure, which is just the worst in perm, and in perm isn't even that good this format. So if I really wanted to play that kind of targeted on field negation, I'd play in perm. And then maybe if I'm maxing out on in perm, because in perm's a good card, just not amazing this format. But if I've maxed out on in perms, I, I would play um, Vela. And then if I've maxed out on Vela's and in perms, I still wouldn't play Moonlit Chill because I just <laughs> I just don't see target negation as that relevant at the moment. So yeah, um, Ash Blossom is going to be A tier. Even though it's not amazingly perfect, it's just so kind of consistently good against most decks. That's what I love about Ash Blossom. And that's why it's, for me, it's pretty much always going to be kind of that A tier hand trap that I always pretty much want to see at some point during the game. It can also hard stop some pretty frustrating cards and it destroys Rogue. So yeah, Ash Blossom, this and there, definitely there. Phantasmate is going to be really low B tier. So Phantasmate is actually good, but it's good in certain matchups and weak in others. So you're going to kind of come up against certain matchups that are not going to link summon at all. Like your Flanders and your Old Liches and stuff. And you're going to be looking like a mug for having Phantasme. However, in other matchups like your PKs and your Brave Spam decks and stuff, Phantasme is going to do just as good of a job because they're either, it's either going to burn through in a gate or it's going to put a body on field, draw you a card, and then also allow you to crash over something on your opponent's turn. So Phantasme is a good hand trap. It's just unfortunately there are better hand traps to play at the moment that are that hit more things essentially. So if I was playing Phantasme, I'd probably put it in my side deck. But to be honest, it wouldn't even be in my side deck just because I think there are more threatening decks. There are more impactful cards that I could play at the moment, but still not bad. So yeah, BTR. Um, this is Dogwood. This is bottom of D tier. Don't play this card as bad. Um, Gamma. Gamma is S tier. Gamma is amazing. It's the best hand trap in the. It's, it's yeah. I'd say it's actually the best hand trap of the format. However, the disadvantages. Two disadvantages of Gamma is firstly, obviously, it has a brick with it, and that always is going to be a bit of an issue with Gamma. And the second issue with Gamma is going to be that the fact that it goes on field means that it can turn off other hand traps. It means that also it doesn't. It pairs well with certain other good good with some other hand traps like Ash Blossom and stuff. But for example, with Imperm, it doesn't necessarily pair well because you have to use the Gamma first. With Nibiru, it doesn't necessarily pair pair well because you have to use the Gamma first again. So it's like, that's a slight disadvantage with it. But it's still a really good card. It's good defensively. It's good offensively. Um, this card is always in my side deck at the very least i don't think i've made a side deck of that gamma in a very long time now because it's just that powerful it's also great in a format where a lot of people are playing hand traps as well like i said defensively it's great because the you, you hand trap they use another you like um try and call by something they try and bell then you gamma and it's like now you've plussed heavily it's just great so yeah really, really good hand trap skull my start is going to be i'd say a, a, a b tier hand trap it's not bad but the disadvantage of skull my start say is that it relies on a card activating in the grave and not everything activates in the grave so so while it's a good hand trap, it's not necessarily always going to be valid, and that's my problem with it. DD Crow, on the other hand, hot take, I'm going to put it at the top of A tier, actually. DD Crow is an amazing hand trap. Now, it is a low impact hand trap. However, just all the top decks at the moment are doing something crucial in the grave that if you DD Crow it, it's so painful. DP, Scythe, I mean, both of these cards are determining exactly how the format operates, and so having access to DD Crow to get rid of Celestial, to get rid of a DP, to get rid of a Scythe is just amazing, can win you the game. Yeah, D um, DD Crow is amazing. This is one of the few hand traps actually at the moment that I actually play at three 
as well. Most hand traps I don't like playing at three because I don't want to see more than one copy. I don't want to see more than one copy in my hand. And if I see two copies in my hand, it's really painful. But DD Crow, you can use multiple copies as well, which is great. Um, no material, it's going to be a CT hand trap. It's not bad. Um, it's, it's never actually been a terrible hand trap. However, I would say the main issue of no material is it's got that dimension shifter clause where it's like you can pretty much only, only use it turn one. And just that clause alone for a hand trap, that's not even necessarily amazingly incredible. It's good, but it's not amazing, in my opinion, makes it not. It, it's unlikely to ever get above C tier. Um, Lancia is going to be... I'd say it's going to be top of eighty. I won't play ST. So the thing about Lancia is it's actually it's really really good in the matchups where it's really really good, but it's, it's really really bad in the matchups where it's really really bad. Similar to Phantasme. That's my problem with Lancia. Now everyone is playing things like Pop Prosperity and stuff, which is great. But Shotgun and Lancia to stop Prosperity isn't always amazing anyway. Because another problem with hand traps like Lancia is if you don't immediately kill them, you just throw away a card for nothing because the card's still in their hand. They can still use the card next turn. You've just stored them for a turn as opposed to actually getting rid of a resource. So our Lancia is a really, really a good hand trap and why i think it is worth being your in your side deck i don't actually think it's an s tier like it must be you can get away with not having it for those reasons scythe is not a hand trap so it should be here but i mean i'll put it at the top of s tier but it shouldn't be there that was a mistake ghost Oga is also going to be another a tier hand trap um it's just good it, it deals with a lot of different decks right now we do have a lot of decks as well that want their cards on the field for some reason you have your flunder um, field spell, you have your journey of destiny, you have your sword sword when they normal summon Moye and things like that, or Hulk decks when they're trying to go into a wood or um, Just in general, Ghost Ogre is usually live. It's also nice against Griffin Rider as well to destroy the Griffin Rider if they attempt to use his negate effect. So, yeah, just in general, really, really good hand trap. Always nice to have that. I usually play that too in most of my decks as well. Droll is also going to be a high tier hand trap as well. Um, this is going to be just really, really good to have in your side deck. I think it should always be in your side as well. Um, it depends on what your locals is like, but in general, Droll just hits so many decks so well. Um, that, that's one reason I like it. You destroy things like Dragons and Flunder, which is nice. Now, the problem with Droll is it's similar to Lancia, where the decks that it doesn't hit, it really does not hit, and they don't give a crap about it. But the decks that it does hit is great. And it's also, again, the same as Lancia, where these Floodgate hand traps, even though they're great because they kind of stun them for a turn, they don't get rid of a card which means your opponent a lot of times can just carry on comboing the next turn. So it's like, if you don't immediately crack back and finish them, I mean, you just lose. So um, yeah, good hand trap, but ne I wouldn't necessarily say it's S tier. Bell, Ash Blossom, Ghost Bell, and um, and uh, Ghost Ogre, all the same. All really good this format. Ghost Bell is nice because it also picks from Called by the Grave, which is nice. But there's just a lot of decks trying to move stuff out of the graveyard, which is going to make Bell really, really, really good. Vela, unfortunately, I'm going to actually put um, at the I'm going to put it at the, at the top of C tier. Um, yeah, it's just really subpar, this format. There's just so many cards that can play around it. Um, it doesn't get rid of a resource in the field. It doesn't negate it, but it doesn't get rid of a resource. And you can only use it on your opponent's turn. So there's just rarely a reason to ever use Vela. Use Imperm, but even Imperm, half the time, is not that great, this format. Speaking of which, Imperm will be top of B tier, but still not an A tier hand trap. I'm, I've completely removed it from quite a few of my lists now because it just doesn't do the job, unfortunately. Um, again, target negation of cards on field. The reason why it's becoming so irrelevant is twofold. Firstly, like I said, we have these decks that are putting out so many cards on the field. And so getting rid of just one or negating just one at a time, they don't, a lot of these decks don't have one choke point. They can kind of pivot and move into different, into different things. So you have more Moye and Normal Summon, and then they just go into Hulk. And then how if they don't have how they use the red rose dragon or something i don't know but it's like the problem this is the problem with these kind of targeted negation cards these targeted negation cards aren't necessarily doing a good enough job of actually stunning the deck and giving you a chance to get advantage and win afterwards and that's the problem now imperm is better than veil like said because you can use it on your term and so a lot of the times in decks that i do play still play imperm in i keep it for example to use on the scythe or to use on the griffin or whatever but it's still not an amazing card unfortunately um winter cherries should be a good card it should be a good card but i think it, the the main problem with this card is more that there's not really a deck that can abuse it as opposed to it being a bad card because if you know what your opponent's playing it really does stun and for example you can use this um call call dp and like completely wreck a deck with that you can use this and call how completely wreck a deck but you do need to know what you're playing against and so the the main issue of this deck is that we still don't have necessarily one deck strong enough that it's worth running this in your main deck with and in your side deck there are better cards that actually activate a win condition to use and so that's why we don't really run this but it's, it's still a good card it's just i think we're just waiting for the right deck to use it 
Uh, Chaos Knight, I'm actually going to put uh, middle B tier. But Chaos Knight is a good card. Um, really, really good card. Um, I like it as well because it puts a body in the field and it discards. So in certain decks like like um, Phantom Knights, for example, this can be a really, really great card. Um, yeah, I think Chaos Knight is good. It's just a shame people don't use it enough. This is the other uh, side frame. In the, in the OCG, they were temporarily using this. I can't remember if this is Spells or Traps, but they were using this when Gamma got limited. Um, or they, they were, yeah, they were using, I don't know if they're still using it, when this was put at 2 or whatever, or, um, just because it adds another name, essentially. Um, so it, your engine isn't as bricky. But um, it's just not worth it. Even though right is a great card, uh, it, negating one spell with this just doesn't isn't worth it a lot of the times, especially because it negates activation, so they've got another spell, they just use it again. Whereas with a monster, a lot of times they can't use it again. But um, yeah, um, Grave of the Mark, nope, this is completely crap because cross out just didn't <laughs> didn't come up so it was crap sore of ace is crap because most of the targeted negations are bad this format dimension shifter is going to be atl this is again this is like the extreme logical conclusion of these two cards if you can play shifter you should be playing shifter it is the best hand trap in the game if you can play it because it just shuts down pretty much every single deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. like the only decks that don't die to it are like my u-turn and flunderies but most decks can't play D Shifter, and that's always going to be the big weakness of it. But the thing is, D Shifter is so good that sometimes it's all, I almost want to play it in a deck, even if I know my deck can't handle it, just because of how good it can be. But yeah, even that turn one restriction isn't a problem half the time for a lot of these decks. Flunder, they just keep clearing their grave and then they'll keep using it, and they lock you on D Shifter for the whole game. Another great thing about D Shifter is it's a pseudo call by the grave because it stops things like Draw and Lancia being used against you. I mean, it's just amazing, yeah. So D Shifter, really, really good hand trap if you can play it. Nib, another STA hand trap this format um nib is just amazing nib plus any other hand trap usually is like game for your opponent that's what makes nib so nice because you pair any of these any other kind of double combo of hand traps isn't as devastating as nib because nib will clear the board you hand trap them and you clear the board that's what's so good about nib um similar to gamma re re removing resources so it's like gamma is the best hand trap by itself but i would say that nib is um Nib is the best hand trap paired of something else because Nib just removes another resource, which is really, really, really great. But uh, yeah, definitely a good card. And Token Collector, I would say, is another one top of tier. I would say probably below Shifter, but top of um, this. It should always be. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put Token Collector in the NS tier. I think Token Collector is good enough that it should always be in your side deck. Um, just because these Hulk decks, they just do so much. And Token Collector is a great card. And it puts a level 4 on the board, which a lot of decks can abuse at level 4 being on their board. But yeah, guys, that is my hand trap tier list. So yeah, definitely an interesting format. Um, hand traps are definitely getting a bit oppressive in my opinion because of the way the format is. So that's something that does need to be addressed. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching. That's what you'll see. Peace.